Hello, precious one. Welcome to Kiss Time with Jesus, brought to you by COPUSA. I am your host, Nina AJ. Hi, hi, children. Hi, 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 hi children. children. Oh, Amen. Amen. Good news. Christ, Christ died for me and you. Precious ones, you are all welcome to today's program, Case Time with Jesus, brought to you by COPUSA. We love all of you. We appreciate you. Jesus loves you so much. And because Jesus loves you so much, I, Antonina, loves you. Everybody here you are seeing loves you right there. We all love you so much. Now, the precious ones that have joined us here on Zoom are going to introduce themselves. And when they're done, you at home too, you also introduce yourself onto us, okay? So let's start with the first person. Hi, everybody. My name is Elena Say from Chicago region. Thank you. My name is Deborah Atapong from Chicago region. Hi, my name is Ariel, and I'm from the Hartford District. Hello, my name is Jesse Ajima, and I'm from the Chicago region. Hello, my name is Joshua Luz, and I'm from PRWC Orange District. Hello, my name is Benedict Kokuya Boa from Cincinnati District. Hi, my name is Darren Afori from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is Declan Afori from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is Joseph Amuzu, and I'm from PIWC Orange. Hi, my name is Esther Amuzu, and I'm from PIWC Orange. Hello, my name is James Osei Ampofu, and I'm from PIWC New York District. Hi, my name is Caleb, and I'm from Wayne District. Precious ones, you are all welcome to today's program. We love you. We love you so much. And you are, precious ones at home, what, what's your name? Perfect. Fantastic. I love your name. God bless you. Invite a friend, call mom, dad, auntie, grandma, grandpa to come sit and enjoy and let us all have fun together. Precious ones, today, throughout the month of April has been set aside and we've been talking about the death and the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ. And last week we talked about when Jesus was crucified on the cross. And today we are here, we are talking about he is risen. He's risen, the resurrection of Christ. The Lord has been what? He has risen from the dead and he is what? He's going to be with the Lord. Precious ones, we are going to learn about the resurrection of Christ. Not only that, what is in it for us as believers, as precious ones? Jesus, God, died on the cross, and then he rose up and went to be with the Lord. And he came and what? And revealed himself to his disciples and people. Precious ones, when he died and he was he resurrected, what what did what was the benefit? What what benefit did as Christians? What is the benefit for us? And that is what we'll be talking about this afternoon. So stay tuned, pick a pencil, pick a paper, a Bible, and then we will go through the scriptures, okay? Uh, Joshua, I had your hand, I, I saw your hand up. I wanted to answer the question. Sure, you can go ahead. Jesus, uh, Jesus died for our sins to save us. Jesus died for our sins to save us. Fantastic answer. God richly bless you. So I will share my screen here and then we will learn our memory verse for today. We'll go ahead and learn our memory verse for today. So I want all of you, I love memory verse. And I always say that as precious ones, it is always, always important for us to learn our memory verse. It goes a very long way in helping all of us. And that is why we need to get glued to our memory verses and also what? Show, 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 show off with it, right? Let people know that you know your stuff, you know your memory verse. So our memory verse for today, our memory verse for today will be taken from Acts, okay? Our memory verse for today is Acts chapter two. Where was it? Let me put it here. So it's Acts chapter two, verse 32. Acts chapter 2, 
verse 32. And I read from the NIV version. God has raised this Jesus to life. And we are all witnesses of it. Amen. 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 So our memory verse for this week is Acts chapter 2, verse 32. And I read from the NIV version again. God has raised this Jesus to life. And we are all witnesses of it. We are all witnesses of it, right? That is why we celebrate Easter every year to remind us of the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ. And that through um, the, the crucifixion of Christ and his resurrection, we are free. Our sins have been forgiven. And now well, we are free and free forever. Hallelujah. And today, our topic is the resurrection of Christ the resurrection of Christ. And uh, we have a few scripture readings that we'll be reading. They are really long ones, okay? So stay put. And then we have some fast readers just as, um, just like you at home. And we are going to go through it and read it, okay? So the first person will read for us, uh, Jesse will read Luke chapter 22, 24, verse 1 to 12. Luke chapter 24, verse 1 to 12. So, Jesse, can you read for us, please? Thank you, Auntie Nina. You're welcome. This afternoon, I'll be reading Luke chapter 24, verse 1 to 12, and I'll be reading from the NIV version. And it reads, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. Verse 2, They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Uh, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that were gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The son of man must be with you and must be delivered over to the hands of the sinners. Be crucified and on the third day be raised, be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back to the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene. Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the woman because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Mm -hmm. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Amen. Amen. Fantastic reading, uh, Jesse. God richly bless you. I will let James read the second uh, scripture for us, scripture reading for us. Luke chapter 24, verse 13 to 35 from the New King James Version. And I read, now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that, that they did not know him. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Then one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem, and have you not known the things which have happened in, there in these days? And he said to them, What things? So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. 
Then he said to them, O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone farther. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to him. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road, and while he opened the scriptures to us? So they rose up that very hour, that very hour, sorry, and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven. And those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. And they told about the things that had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Fabulous reading, um, uh, Apostle James, Prophet James. God richly bless you. So precious ones, as Christians, our faith is centered on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We rejoice knowing that Jesus Christ has indeed risen from the dead, giving believers victory over sin and death. The Bible says that where all death is your victory, where all death is your stain, the stain of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thus be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm, precious ones, stand firm. Let nothing move you, okay? Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Why? Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. First Corinthians, what? Chapter 15, verse 55 to 58. Yeah. We like Christ easily, what? We are the Christ easily followers, right? We should therefore be joyful. We should be joyful to share the good news of Jesus' resurrection with those that are what? Around us. We need to be very joyful about that. Precious ones, the resurrection of Christ, right? The question that I want to put on the floor for us to check about today, and you can come from all angles. So in this resurrection of Christ, Jesus died, right? He was crucified on the cross. And then what? He, he who can give us a little bit um, um, summary of him? or from what we just read. When Jesus died on the cross, from the cross till he was laid on the tomb, and then he rose from the dead, who can give us a little summary about that? So that after, from that part, then we kind of proceed from there. Yes, Joshua. Jesus died on, our, on the cross for our sins, and then resurrected. But when the woman came with spices, uh, they didn't see the, they saw the tomb open, the rock open. Usually if you were buried, they would put a rock over. They didn't see, so they went to tell the 11 disciples. At first they didn't believe them, but Peter went to see and he saw. And then when the followers of Jesus were going seven miles to a different town, they were talking about like what was happening and then Jesus kind of joined like what they were talking about, but they didn't recognize him. And then um, when they got there, it was late at night when they got there. So they asked Jesus to go inside with him and then Jesus broke bread. And that's when they realized that it was Jesus. But by that time he has disappeared. God bless you, Joshua. God bless you. James, you want to add to it? Or oh, he said it all. He said it all. Okay, fantastic. Yes, Benedict. I just want to throw something out there. Like, that ignorance that they showed, they didn't recognize Jesus. 
the same thing I would always say the things in the past is going to repeat itself before Jesus comes. So, like, before the Antichrist, when the Antichrist comes, exclaims, I am Jesus, and I also bow down and follow me. That's the, he's wrong, but people will still follow them out of ignorance because they didn't know Jesus. This is why we have to stay firm and really know and understand Jesus' character traits and his, and his behaviors and also the way that he's going to come down. It all explained in Revelation. So you can prepare for that and so we don't get played. God bless you. Great contribution. Yes, um, James. Auntie Nina, I actually have a question. So yeah. in verse 16, it says, but their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. So why did Jesus not want them to like know it was him? Why did he restrain their eyes? Great question. Yes, who want to try? Yeah, um, Darren. And then we can come to Declan and then Joshua. I wanted to say that he did this because if he had... Uh, if you had decided not to restrain your eyes, then it will tell right away that it's Jesus, and then they would all run away. Like, oh, okay, they would run and go and tell the disciples, okay, we've seen Jesus like they did when they were when they recognized him. So, so if he had done that, then he wouldn't also be able to explain the Bible. He won't be able to explain everything. Okay, so this had to happen before this, and this was God's reason, and this is why. And you'd also not be able to break the bread and give them to, give it to them. Great answer yes um you want to respond to daron james or you want his brother to go first his brother can go first okay um Declan. so i kind of are you are you answering james question yes okay so i kind of agree with Daron, but then just to throw in a little bit deeper let's say that if jesus would have said that he he said like this, oh, I am Jesus, come, hug me, hug me. <laughs> they were just fall on the ground because he's Holy Spirit. So yeah. first of all, this, Jesus was the only one who can disguise himself as anyone. Angels and Jesus are the only people. But then as you can see, let's say that, let's say that you are a person, yeah, you're actually Jesus. Let's say that you are Jesus and then, here you are. You are trying to you are trying to talk with some person, but then you are in Jerusalem. You want to show your wisdom, but then as people, you would your wisdom would be expected. You want to be it to be unexpected. So you let's say that you go and study all night. Now and then when it is at the morning, then you then you are then you are wide awake, ready to go and show your wisdom to the other people. <laughs> great contribution Declan great contribution yes Joshua Joshua yeah you your hand was up you were trying to answer James question right yeah I agree okay. with Darren and Declan said but I wanted to add something when okay. they were going and Jesus uh was with them when they got to the place and they were like in the hotel or to break the bread Jesus opened their spiritual eyes Mm. So that's how they were able to recognize him before, like he was gone. So it wasn't okay. like he was restrained, but it's just that their spiritual eyes was not open. So it wasn't that their eyes were restrained, but their spiritual eyes was not open. And James was asking, why, why, why that? Why that? James, do you want to answer your own question? I was just asking Darren and Declan. Darren and Declan said that um, if Jesus opened their eyes, then he wouldn't have been able to like tell them what he, to tell like tell teach them the scriptures that he wanted them to teach. So my question is: so if that was the reason, then why did he wait till after they finished eating and then he just disappeared? Um, because then. Like I said, he won't be able to explain it. Plus, if he, the Bible never said that he waited until after they finished eating. The Bible said that he broke the bread and then he gave thanks, and then the their eyes were open. So he never meant that they actually ate. Okay. So okay. my other other question. <laughs> <laughs> no, James, wait. Let um, Ellen, Ellen, were you were you gonna 
um, as of have James Corston, you have two things to say regarding James Corston. Mm -hmm. Okay, then you can go ahead. And then James well, can come in. But the yeah. first question, I think, um, I also agree with Darren and Declan, I, but I think it was also fear. They were, they're like gonna be scared of Jesus. Like seeing, it would be more like seeing a ghost, looking at a ghost and that's not something like you see every single day. So you're, mm -hmm. you're gonna be like scared. You're gonna wanna run away. Yeah, and my second thing was um, to the second question that James asked, Mm -hmm. And I wanted to say, I forgot what I wanted to say. I'm coming. <laughs> That's okay. You can come back another time. Yes, um, Joshua, and then I go back to James. The reason why is because since they were followers of Jesus, they probably knew the Passover. So when they broke the bread. Probably know the Passover. Uh -huh. Say that again, uh, um, Joshua. Like they remember the Passover, so like when they broke the bread, like they remembered, like Jesus said, "This the bread is my body, and the wine is my blood." Okay, great contribution, great answer, um, James. So my other other question is: even though their eyes were restrained, could they still have seen Jesus? Because Joshua said their spiritual eyes weren't open, but then you're looking at two of Jesus' own disciples. So if they paid attention, would it have been possible to know it was Jesus, even though their spiritual eyes were restrained? Okay, James, it looks like you have more hands up to answer your question. Okay, we'll go to Benedict, and then we come to uh, the full of um, Declan and Darren, and then Ellen. So yes, it would have been possible, because Jesus always wants to pitch people or his sheep or his flock to always come to him. So yes, that would have probably been possible for them to notice Jesus. But at that time, Jesus probably did not want them to notice him because he wanted them to remember, like Joshua said, the Passover. Great contribution, great answer. Yes, Declan. Um, just for an answer to James, just for just some background. If you want to read about the blindness, just go to about Matthew. I think when you read the whole entire Matthew, you find out. <laughs> but then there's one type of um, chapter and verse, but then I don't actually know it. And I also wanted to say that their eyes were spiritually blind. They were full of sin. So there are people that they were, they were like righteous, who repented and other people, then they would have just seen him like nothing. The Bible says that they were Jesus' disciples. Meaning they were No, and they weren't disciples. They were followers of Jesus. They were followers of Jesus. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm they were followers of Jesus. Great, great, great contribution, Joshua. Thank you for correcting us. Um, yes, Darren. I wanted to say that. But God bless you, Declan, for your contribution. Okay, thank you. I wanted to say that, yes, they, they probably would have noticed him. In fact, I think they did notice him because the Bible says that they were kept from um, like realizing that it was Jesus. So maybe they realized, okay, so this is Jesus. But then they probably didn't pay much attention to it. So the guy is dead. So if if the person is dead and you are seen, they'll be like, oh, no, nah, I'm probably just seeing things. Maybe because I miss him too much. But you see how sometimes when someone you've seen, you haven't seen a very long time, when you see the person, like, no, nah, I'm probably just seeing things. So maybe that was what happened. Okay, maybe. Okay, then we'll, we'll pick the last one from Ellen and then we'll come back to James. Oh, okay. I, I, didn't, ask I, you, I didn't have anything else to say. No, I didn't answer your question. Oh yeah, they're answering my question so far. Okay, okay. Yes, Ellen. And then okay. we come to uh, Jesse. I, first, I wanna say something else. Um, I think this is something I learned in school. Um, my teacher told me, well, my religion teacher, he's also a, a pastor. He told me that um, a disciple and an apostle, they're two different things. A disciple is basically anybody that followed Jesus. As long as you're a follower of Jesus, you're a disciple. But an apostle, there are 12 of them. 
And those are the 12 apostles that we're learning about. Okay, my second thing that I wanted to answer Jim's question is, um, I don't think they would have been able to see Jesus because um, if Jesus doesn't want them to see him, they're not gonna be able to see him because he has the power and the authority to make them literally, literally blind for them not to see anything at all. Just as um, he does to, um, what do we call it? John the Baptist's father, I forgot his name. Yeah, just like he did to John the Baptist's father. So I think he, his authority and power is like, he's able to do some, th some stuff that he, normal human beings can't do. John the Baptist's like father Baptist is the best friend of James. We had a conversation. You remember uh, yeah, I um, yeah. his name. And then James, yeah, James was on that man for a very long time. That's why I said that is the best friend of James. But that was just was disappointed me. in my friend. Yeah, he was very disappointed in his friend because he was expecting his friend to know better than what he did. So mm. that was just by the way. So um, you can go ahead, Ellen. Sorry to interrupt. I was just making fun of. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um, they wouldn't have been able to see him and. They didn't. So I don't think it's their fault. I think that was something that God just wanted to happen. So, yeah. That was God's plan. Just like last week when we we're talking about why Judas is scared and no, I'm not any other person. With all the disciples that Jesus, uh, Jesus the 12 disciples, why, why Judas is scared and not any other person, right? And that's what we talked about last, last week. And same here, that is what Ellen is related to. It can be that was the plan. That is how God wanted it to happen, right? Is that what you were trying to say, Ellen? Okay. Okay, God bless you for your answer. We go to James and then we come to Benedict. Auntie, did you mean Jesse? Jesse, sorry. Oh. Do you guys remember when Jesus just came in when the two followers were walking? I have a question. Why were they so calm if they didn't know it was Jesus? Because if it, if it was me in their shoes, I would be scared because someone I don't know is joining me in my, in my conversation with my friend. So why do you think they were so calm when Jesus just joined them, even though they didn't know? Fantastic question. Yes, James. James Hunt was up first. Because the guy is the prince of peace. So naturally, they would have felt at ease around it. Because you're looking at Jesus when he was um he was teaching people, and the, and the little children just ran to him. So the disciples had to push the children away, had to hold the children away. So naturally, anybody who comes in Jesus' presence feels at ease around him. God bless you. Great answer. Anybody that comes to Jesus feels what? Comfortable at ease with him. God bless you, James. Yes, uh, Joshua, you want to add to it? Yeah, I agree with James, but also the reason why is because it's not like you're going to get scared or anything because like you follow Jesus and the reason why he let him join the conversation is because that's just pure being like respectful or not being rude. God bless you, Joshua. God richly bless you. Yes, Benedict. Um, Darren, then Benedict. Okay, I wanted to say that the Bible, the Bible, this is an actual fact. The Bible says that Cleopas asked it, like the, his other companion, why aren't we excited when he first began to take, talk about all the things that happened? So I'm pretty sure that when they when like when he walked along them, they were okay, okay, so this is how he speaks. So they'll probably be comfortable, like um James said. Great contribution. Yes, Benedict. I'm very really skeptical on this one because when you said like why Judas is Scarlet, like I thought because like Judas, um, he was confused and he didn't understand Jesus. But then, why him? Because God could have chose other one. So my question—that's not, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about Judas Iscariot. Yes, I know. Was that oh, okay. 
But I, but that's just a question I just want to. Oh, you're building your point on some. Okay. You can go ahead. I just, I just want to think like, I was kind of confused because that confusion that he had is kind of the same confusion that the two followers had when um Jesus was um revealed himself onto them, and until. He broke the bread with them. They remembered, but it was kind of like too late. Kind of like the end times, like when you we don't submit yourself to Christ, and then the time comes that judgment day, but it's too late. So I just wanted to relate with that. God bless you. God, God richly bless you, Benedict. God bless you for relating from another um, direction. God richly bless you. Yeah, let's let's go to Ariel. And then we come to Joshua. Going back to Jesse's question, I think that they didn't like, I think they weren't scared when um, Jesus in disguise came into conversation because one, uh, I think they didn't, I think they thought that Jesus didn't mean any harm. It's not like they were going to kill them. And also um, in Deuteronomy, it was said that um, it was normal for people going on journeys and like long places that they could like join in conversation and talk about religious events and just like in Jesus in general. God bless you. God bless you for great, uh, for, for contributing. God richly bless you. So here, precious ones, we can, we can actually say that from where, where I also want to, I also want to contribute here um, per what um, Jesse is saying. Um, Jesse is saying that so, he, if if we were thinking that or we were saying that those people that were walking the two people that were walking with Jesus uh, how come that if we're saying they were not seeing him then how come when the Jesus was walking with them they were not scared right Jesse was that your question and I I, I also want to come from this direction that I think that you see if, if, if you commune with God, when you have a special and a good relationship with God, when God appears to you, I don't think you're going to run away. When God appears to you, I don't think you're going to be scared. Why? Because you need the spirit of the Lord comes to, to it's like somebody, um, you, if you are familiar with someone, when the person sees you or when you see someone, you easily connect, right? There are people that when you see them, your spirit just can't connect with them, right? And there are others that you see, they say, oh, I easily get along with this person. I am sure at that time when Jesus was with those people, the reason why the people were not scared is because, well, their spirit, they could connect to Jesus. They have a special relationship with him already, right? So him, him coming to dwell among them and walking and having a conversation to him, to those people, they were, were they were very comfortable, just as James said, right? When when the when when you dwell under the presence of God, even now, when you stay under the feet of Christ and God appears to you, we've talked about this before. I don't think you will run away. Why? Because you have a special relationship with the Father. You have a special relationship with Christ. So you seeing Jesus or God speaking to you, it wouldn't be something that would be very scary unless he appeared himself in a very uh, scary way. Otherwise, you would not be scared of him, okay? You would dwell, he would dwell comfortably among you and you yourself will feel comfortable. Before we come to James and Joshua, before we come to James and Joshua, Esther, who were the men in, 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 in clothes that gleamed like lightning? Who were the men in clothes that gleamed like lightning? They were angels. They were angels. They were angels. God richly bless you. Fantastic. Now, uh, Debbie, Deborah, what did the angels say to the women? What did the angels say to the women? Um, they said, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Why are you looking for him? He's no longer here. He is risen. He is risen. God bless you. Fantastic answer, Deborah. And, um, and Joseph, 
What did the women do when they returned from the tomb? What did they do when they, they returned they from? They told the eleven disciples that they that uh, when they went to put the spices on him, that Jesus wasn't there, and the tomb was open. Fantastic answer, Joseph. God bless you. God bless you, Esther. Who appeared to the two? Who appeared to two of Jesus' followers? when they were on their way to Enos or Emmaus. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Fantastic, yes, let's go to James. Yes, James, your hand was up. I was actually gonna say that, um, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that the reason why they weren't afraid was because there was safety in numbers because there was two of the people and only one of Jesus. I like and when your parents tell you don't talk to strangers, they're usually telling that to little kids who can easily get like taken away by an adult. But you have two grown ups here versus one guy, one stranger. And I'm also trying to say I'm thinking it was God's will because Jesus could have been walking on another road with two other people who are having a much different conversation, but he chose to be at that same place at that same time. So I'm thinking that it was God's will for them and it was, there was safety in numbers. It was God's will for them. And that is why they were not scared. And that is why they felt comfortable. And that answers to what, that's another answer to Jesse's question. God bless you, James. God bless you. Yes, Joshua. I wanted to go back to uh, Jesse's qu Jesse's question about okay. how like why were they not scared? It's because due to um they not knowing and thinking it's like a random person and Ariel said like in Deuteronomy like uh it's kind of normal for like people to like join conversations and talk about religious stuff. They didn't know and they just thought it was like a regular person. And like they were just talking, like being nice, like if, like they were like if, like they just knew each other. Joshua, God bless you. God, God bless you. Good thinking skills. God bless you. Yes, um, Jesse. I want to try to answer my answer my own question. Oh, oh so we didn't talk? answer you. Or you no, still you not guys, you guys answered okay. me, but I also okay. want to try to add my own. Contribute answer. to it. Okay. We were talking about the presence of the presence of Jesus made them feel calm, but maybe mm -hmm. it wasn't just the presence because they were talking about Jesus. Maybe that made them feel like Jesus was around them and that they were under his under his cover. I knew James was gonna come. Yes, James. <laughs> I was also I was just gonna add um my own thought that those two men who were walking on the road. Me reading that scripture, I'm beginning to say that the relationship with God is very questionable mm -hmm. because these were two followers of Jesus himself. They were talking about Jesus and he's walking right next to you. So if you were a strong Christian who, who believes in God, Jesus himself wouldn't have had to come and close, spiritually close and blind your eyes for you because you would have already have recognized him right next to you. And it's, it's just ironic because they're walking right next to the guy talking about him. And they couldn't even, they couldn't even understand the fact that it, it was him right beside him. They had to like walk a couple more miles because they were already walking seven miles away from Jerusalem. So they had to walk more miles to the nearest inn. They had to wait for him to sit down, break bread and give thanks before they even understood that it was him they were talking to the whole time. God bless you. Great, great, uh, uh, good thinking skill right there. God bless you. Deep one. God richly bless you, James. Yes. Yeah, so, Daryl, you have something? Okay, so you, you can contribute and we'll move on, okay? We want to focus on the benefits of Christ's resurrection for us, okay? So, okay. uh, Daryl, you can go and then we'll move on, okay? Okay. I just wanted to say that after what James said about... Um, their, their faith being questionable. I think I agree with them. I agree with him for once because <laughs> some, they were all both acting like like someone. Because when just when God first called someone, someone thought it was Eli three times. 
and Eli had to come and tell and tell them like somewhat that it was God. But this was different because these were disciples of Jesus himself. They had followed him all his life. And so they knew him very well. So I'm pretty sure you would have been able to tell his voice, how he looked and everything. Plus, if they had focused enough, I'm sure that his voice, everything that he said, they would have understood it and then said, okay, this man speaks like Jesus. And then they would have been able to tell that he was Jesus. But I think their faith was questionable because of the fact that they considered Jesus a prophet. The Bible literally says that, yes, Jesus was a very powerful prophet. And so I think that their faith was very, very questionable. You can't consider the one who's going to forgive you of all the sins that you've committed, which are very great, and say, okay, yeah, yeah, just a prophet. So pretty much all you're also saying is that um, as, as, as there's a saying in the Bible, a quote in the Bible about the, 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 the sheep knows the shepherd and the shepherd knows his sheep, right? So if the sheep doesn't know, can hear the voice of his shepherd, then that is questionable, right? God bless all of you. Great contribution. Now, I just want us to uh, think, look at this. He said, well, through Christ's resurrection, when Jesus was crucified and he rose from the dead, right? When he rose from the, through Jesus' resurrection, what are some of the benefits that are in for we that are in Christ Jesus, right? And the first one, when I was reading the scripture, what I got from that was that word. You what? We can conquer fear. You can conquer fear, any word. Conquer any fear invading your life. Fear of death. Fear of life. Fear of danger. What things are you afraid of? What are you afraid? What, what, what are you facing? What fear are you facing? in your daily life now. So because Jesus came, when he came to die and rose, he took away every fear from us, right? So now we don't have to be afraid, right? He took it away from us. So why do we have to be afraid of um, what is about to happen to us in this difficult times that we find ourselves in, right? Do we have to be afraid? God is reminding us that what in his resurrection, he took away fear. He took away fear from us. And that is something that we need to uh, keep in mind, okay? And, and the floor is open. You can, we can speak about that and then we can move on to the next point. Yes, Benedict. What this, do you also think? This is why I grew myself from what last time I said, because I said the blood of Jesus is a sponge. Because when Jesus died, he absorbed all those sins and all those fears that everything that the devil was throwing at us and all those swords and arrows that the devil was trying to attack us with, he absorbs it all. And one thing that, that, that when the benefits that when Jesus came and died and re resurrected, it we opened our eyes. Because now we can see the bad things who so can stop. Like... For instance, like if I use like, if time is, if I, if I have like a curfew and like I'm outside for almost too long and minutes are coming up, that blood of Jesus can warn me. Just going, keep cycling through my head. And like, it's like a buzzing alarm clock. That's like, that's like warning me. Time is, I should check my phone or should check the time because time is coming up. So I should start heading home. That type of stuff that the blood of Jesus does, that's the, some of the benefits. The blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross and that after he rose from the dead and went to be with the Lord, that blood wiped away all our fear. It wiped away the fear. All fear are gone. Anytime like you find yourself, right, in a, in a very, in, in a corner that you are so crippled with fear, I want you to remember that when God rose from the dead, he took away all that, right? We should not be afraid. Anytime you feel like you are so scared, go on to the Lord and tell the Lord that God, when you rose from the dead, you took away fear. Therefore, take away fear for me. Fear of math, fear of reading, fear of science, 
fear of, 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 you know what you're scared of, right? It doesn't have to be too scary. Some people say, oh, I don't like this subject. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, I don't. It's a, you fear, you're scared of it, right? It's a phobia. Oh, I don't like to be in a very quiet place. It's, for, it's fear. But remember, we that are in the Lord, we are not supposed to be afraid, okay? God bless you. Yes, um, Jesse, and we go to James. Another benefit of Jesus of Jesus' resurrection is that we all know that when we die, people say, oh, I hope I go to heaven, or I hope I go to heaven. But now, if we live our life like how Jesus wants us to live our life, when we die, hopefully we can go to heaven and celebrate with him. Amen. When we die, we will go be with the Lord. We will one day go be with the Lord. That is the benefit of he what? When he died, he didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead. He has power over death. And one day we'll all go be with the Lord, right? In heaven. God bless you. That is one benefit too. The second benefit, God richly bless you, uh, uh, Jesse. God bless you. Yes, James. Auntie, I was just going to say that the blood of Jesus does many things for a Christian because the yes. The blood of Jesus protects you because when you look back in the Old Testament, when the angel of death was coming over Egypt, God told the Israelites to kill a lamb and put it over their doorpost. So immediately they did that when the angel passed by, it would pass over the house, but it would go to the Egyptians and take their children. So the blood of Jesus protects um Christians and also the blood of Jesus is a source of forgiveness. God says, if we repent of our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us, and He will He will use His actually was actually use His blood to wash all of our sins because by His stripes we are healed. And also, I'm also thinking that um, Jesus's blood is a source of an in, immeasurable power because measurable when Jesus power. was dying. When, when all of his blood was poured out and only water remained, when he poured out his blood, he was then able to go defeat death, rise up to the hand of the Father, interceding on, on his right hand, interceding on our behalf. So the power that was in Jesus' blood, it had to be shed before that he could go and defeat death. Amen. 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 That blood had to be shed for it to defeat death. So that what? When he rose, when he went up to be with the maker, right? He took away some of these things. That is why I always say that word. In everything, last week I kept saying the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Use the blood of Jesus for everything. The blood of Jesus. Even when you're going to school and use your purse, I use the blood of Jesus on my pencil. I use the blood of Jesus as an eraser. I use the blood of you. Use the blood of Jesus on everything you can find your hands on. Why do I say that? Because there is power in the blood of Jesus. There is healing in the blood of Jesus. There is hope in the blood of Jesus. Now, the benefit of his resurrection. Who can tell us some of the benefit? Otherwise, Auntie, I'll say it all. Um, Jesse have said some. Um, um, James too have I've come up with one. I've come up with one. Yes, let's go to... Um, um, Darren. Okay, I wanted to say that the first thing that every that should come to everyone's mind when we talk about the resurrection is forgiveness, because that was the whole reason why I came to it. Because right. when you read Romans six twenty three, it says that um, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of mm -hmm. God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. If mm -hmm. Jesus hadn't come, we wouldn't have been able to have eternal life and be in mm -hmm. heaven and be working on good, something that people pay many money just to get a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. We will be working on good. So I wanted to say that the first thing that comes to me, <laughs> forgiveness. Yeah, and when you talk about gold and silver, we won't go far because we have a perfect example. That was a contributor to Jesus' death. And that was what Judas Iscariot, who went to sell Jesus for what? Silver, just, <laughs> a, just silver, right? Not even gold, right? So look at the extent that uh, Judas Iscariot sold Jesus, a whole man, a kid, for silver, right? And we are saying that the blood of Jesus was shed on the cross for our sin. That word, you will use what gold to even what pay millions of dollars for 
and you'll still not get uh, what eternal life. So it's just an additional example just to let you know that, you know what? What money can buy, it cannot buy the blood of Jesus. It cannot buy you what? The eternal life. And that is why I always tell precious ones that let us use the blood of Jesus. The, there is power in the blood of Jesus. Use the blood of Jesus. And remember, sin, in the olden days, we have to kill lambs. Just imagine lambs that were killed in those days. But now the final sacrifice was made. And through it, we have been saved, right? We will have eternal life. We, will, we, we, we are enjoying it. And we are, we, are, we are swimming in the pool of it. God richly bless you. Great contribution. Yes, James uh, Benedict. And then we come to James. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So the blood, the blood of Jesus doesn't, doesn't just give us forgiveness, but it gives us power to break the chains of the devil. The song that I relate that relates to this song. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. To break every chain. God bless you. God bless you. Benedict. God richly bless you. Yes, uh, Joshua, we go to Jesse. Um, I actually have a question. You have a question? Okay, then hold on. Jesse, do you also have a question or it was a contribution to? It was a contribution to the okay. 30 pieces of silver. Okay. See, technically, if you think about it, the soldiers bought Jesus from Judas because they gave him money and he sold Jesus to them. But the benefit, the benefit that we get from Jesus is that we didn't have to buy the blood of Jesus. He gave it to uh -huh. us for free. And uh -huh. not only did it cleanse us from our sins, but it saved us from eternal death. And this, and again, another benefit from Jesus' resurrection. God bless you. God bless you, Jesse. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, um, Joshua. My question was like, I know like the blood of Jesus saved us from sins and eternal death and like probably from even worse, but I actually have a question. If like, let's just say, if we didn't have the blood of Jesus, how would we be? Like, will we be in eternal death? Will we be alive? Would like this whole population be wiped out? What would happen? Hmm. I'll start with um, Ariel, and then we'll go to James. Without the blood of Jesus, we wouldn't have protection. We wouldn't feel like the um, regular people. We would be in a lot of fear, and we would be scared for the things coming across us. That's what I think about um, if we, like, didn't have the blood of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Um, um, great answer. Yes. Um, James, and then we come to um, Benedict. Joshua, just to clarify here, do you want my the version of my answer where you go to sleep tonight, or do you want the actual <laughs> natural story? Because the if we, if life without the blood of Jesus is going to be terrible. Absolutely uh -huh. terrible. But then if you look at it, though, the blood, well, life without the blood of Jesus would actually be very bad because Jesus, I mean, God sent Jesus to come and atone for our sin. And that was hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of years ago. And even when God created the earth, the very first day, Adam and Eve, um, they, we lived a life of sin. So if Jesus didn't come to die for our sins, and then we're just coming back to like our generations, that's a couple hundred million years, if my math is correct, which is probably not, but that's a lot of years. <laughs> that's been accumulated of sin. So if Jesus Christ, because um, Benedict said that God chastens us. So if God was to chasten us for all those centuries of sin, it would be terrible. It would be Period. terrible. Great contribution, James. God bless um, you. Yes. Um, yes. Okay, I want to say No, 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 it's Declan. So, I mean, yeah, totally cool. So let's say that so what, without the blood of Jesus, 
we had our life would be like un unbearable, miserable. The, like the ghost will be just flying around and you'll be wondering, why am I even living on the earth? And then Satan will just appear to you like this with no, with no explanation that you just get into temptation. But then because of the blood of Jesus, Hallelujah. you are huge, with a huge wall of fire. This Sunday, uh, my father, my father was preaching, and then he said that Jerusalem it will have no walls, a city with no walls, but then the Lord Himself will build a hedge of fire around him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Great contribution. Great contribution. Yes, Jesse. Another way you can compare how bad it would be if we didn't have the blood of Jesus. You see how now in modern day, even though we have the blood of Jesus, there are shootings, there are killings, there are suicides, there are mass bombing. Imagine that but one million times worse. That's how bad it would be. You would think your life is worthless, but because of the blood of Jesus, we still have a place in his heart. And I know he will never fail us. Amen. 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 And amen. God bless you. Esther, when were they able to recognize that Jesus was with them? When were they able to recognize that Jesus was with them? When, when he when he blessed the bread and then he broke it and, and shared it with them. God, God bless you. God bless you. Great answer. God richly bless you. Fantastic. Yes, Joseph. What did these two do after Jesus disappeared? What did these two people do after Jesus had disappeared? That same hour they got up and uh, went back to Jerusalem. They got up and went back to Jerusalem. They went back to Jerusalem. God bless you. Fantastic, amazing answer. Yes, Deborah, what did Jesus do to ease their fears and remove their doubt? What did Jesus do to ease their fears and remove their doubt? Is Deborah? Deborah. You know? You want me to come back to you? I'll come back to you, okay? Yes, Ariel. Wait, can I answer the question if that's fine? Yes, you can. Yes. If you he want. showed them um, he showed them his hands and feet. He also ate some fish with them. He showed his hands and feet, and he also what ate some fish with them. God bless all of you. Yes, James. And you know, when Darren and Declan were saying, it actually reminded me that without the blood, we wouldn't have protection. Because we would be walking around every day, and then there would be demons appearing, like he said, and, and then the devil would always be um attacking us and we would have nothing to protect us and it would be hard to compensate for the blood of Jesus's loss in our life because Jesus had the blood in him and even then he had to fast 40 days and 40 nights like with nothing in between just so that he could be strong enough to um, resist the attacks of the devil and that's with him being filled with his own blood so as Christians we should always have the blood with us like I was saying life without blood would be very, very, very terrible. Be deadly. If you are if you have life, nobody will have life without blood. Scientifically. If you don't have blood, you don't have energy. You can't even walk. You can do you can function. The blood, the heart, the heart needs the brain, your heart, they all need blood to keep you moving. So with no blood, you are not you dead, right? So that is why I keep saying the blood of Jesus is power. There is power in the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, we've learned this afternoon again that the blood of Jesus will surround and give grant us will protection, divine protection. So you need the blood of Jesus, right? Use the blood of Jesus. Anyhow, any shape you want to use the blood, use it. There is power in, in, your, in, in your mouth. Whatever that comes out of your mouth is power. 
I use the blood of Jesus. I anoint my lips. I use the blood of Jesus. I plead it all over myself, right? Why do you plead the blood of Jesus upon yourself? Because what? You want the protection of God. When the enemy sees you, the blood that surrounds you will, will, will begin to throw arrows on the enemy and then the enemy will start running, right? The blood of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Ellen, your hand was up or has been up. Oh, and I, um, I just remember something. Um, when um, Jesus ate the fish with them, mm -hmm. you see how when he was picking his disciples, he was like, come and join me so you can be fishes of men instead of fishes of, you know, fish. So I just thought that it's actually sort of ironic. Come and I'll make you fishes of men. And not fishes of fish. 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 <laughs> fishes of men and not fishes of fish. I love that. Great, great, great catch. God bless you, Ellen. Yes, uh, give, um, James. A James, anytime I look at your screen, I want to call you by your mom's name. <laughs> yes, go ahead, because it's right there. I actually have a question, Auntie Nina. So in the Bible, the word of God is our armor. So does that mean that the word of God is much more powerful than God's blood? Who want to answer that? You want me? Okay, Benedict, you want to go. Okay, Benedict, you can go. Well, technically, well, I would actually say they kind of equal each other out. Because like, well, the blood of Jesus has more stuff to it, but the armor of God, you definitely need the armor of God because like in, in war rooms, like prayer rooms, like you're fighting, you, you need the armor of God, especially when you go outside into the real world. You don't see things, but in the spiritual world, I can guarantee you, if you have a dream that God told you this virtual world, you will understand what I'm saying that you're definitely going to need the armor of God because then you're going to see physical demons outside. We're hearing the people with that rap music like, eh, 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 with them bad music that has all those cuss words in it. You're going to see devils flying around with them. That's why you need the armor of God for protection. But you also need the blood of God to cleanse you to so with more protection. So you don't just need the armor of God. You need the blood of God so they can be combined and work together. Great contribution. Great contribution. God bless you. We go to Darren and we go to Jesse and we go to Joseph. I wanted to say that the word of God isn't pow more powerful than, um, than let's say, Jesus. The, the blood. The blood. Than the blood. Neither, is it, neither is it less powerful than the blood or neither is it equal with the blood because the word of God is also the blood. When you read John 1, when it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So if, if, the, if the word was God, that means that the word is also the blood, and the blood is also the word. God bless you. God bless you. Yes. Um, whose hand was Jesse? Yes, Jesse, and we go to Joseph. I really like the way Benedict compared the two to say that they're the same. Because again, let's go to the battle with the demon. The blood of Jesus acts like a layer two of our skin. And then mm -hmm. and then the Bible just acts like our armor. So even if they somehow manage to get past the armor, they still won't get past the blood of Jesus because mm. that is what protect us, protects us the most. Fantastic, fabulous. God bless you. Yes, Joseph. I actually wanted to answer Joshua's question. Go ahead. So, if without the blood of Jesus, life on earth will be miserable. But then just imagine how miserable it will be in hell. Because without the blood of Jesus, you won't be protected. So then you will go to hell. And it's going to be even more miserable than life on earth. Because currently, if you, because if currently, if you don't believe in Jesus, you'll go to hell. And that's already miserable. Going to hell is already miserable. So without the blood of Jesus and going to hell, and that's super duper miserable. Without the blood of Jesus, life, life will be so miserable. God bless you. Fantastic contribution, Joseph. Back to what we are talking about. Back to the blood of Jesus and then the word of God, right? 
Um, Benedict, you've spoken, you've answered that. James, do you want to answer your own question or um, is somebody have any idea? The blood of Jesus, right? The blood of Jesus and then the word of God. Which one is more what? More powerful, right, James? Was that an answer, um, the question? I would say that all of them are important. You need one, you need each other. Just as we, we always say that you need to read the Bible, right? If you don't know the word of God, how can you speak the word of God, right? You remember we said the body, if your body will function without blood in your body, you are not human, right? Because scientifically, the blood has to go through. Your, you need the blood for, the, for your heart to pump the blood to your brain, to your whole body, for you to have a lead and be able to have what? And there's oxygen in the blood. So if you don't have enough oxygen in your blood, that becomes another whole ball game altogether. So you need the blood to lead, right? Same way when it comes to the Bible and then it comes to the blood of Jesus. I think, Auntie Nina, and this is just for me, this is not from the scriptures. I'm also sharing my idea, right? I also think that you need both. And I agree with what um, Jesse and Benedict and, 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 and Darren all said, right? We need them. The word of God is our soul, right? We need that. There's like one is covering the other. One is there for the other. You need both of them. Believers, we need all of them, okay? And that is what is, it's, it's like when a kid says that God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit are all one. How can you say one plus one plus one is one? It doesn't really make sense, right? But in the sight of God, it makes sense, right? The Trinity, it makes sense, right? When it comes to the things of God, it is only those that understand that really what makes sense out of them, right? Why does it make sense? Because the Holy Spirit will open your inner mind, your inner eyes for you to understand what uh, the Spirit wants you to know. Right. So I know and I, I know and I believe that what I need Nina need both. It, the, all of them are so important to me. OK, uh, we'll go to Ariel, Benedict, and then we come to Jesse. We are wrapping up now and we'll continue uh, the resurrection next week. We still have a lot we didn't touch on. I just wanted to say I really agree with Auntie Nina because um, you really need both. It's like going to a fight with. Uh, one, say you come with the word of God. That's like coming with a shield. But to attack the person, you can't use the shield. You need a sword. You need both of them hand in hand to do well in the fight. God bless you, Ariel. God bless you. Yes, um, um, better it is. And then we go to Ellen and James. Whose hand was that first? I can't remember. So we'll go to James and come to Ellen. Speaking of the Holy Spirit, like... You also need that too, because sometimes your fights don't always go well. And I'll tell you that myself, because today I also made a mistake to myself. So not all of your fights go well. So your Holy Spirit can before, beforehand, mm. your fights fail, your Holy Spirit gives you ideas or in real life ways, convicts you of your sin. So don't you don't be proud and say, no. Oh, this is supposed to be like this, not like this. You admit your fault. Because honestly, I have a hard time admitting that I was wrong. So don't, don't blame yourself. So you need to be, the Holy Spirit also helps you. So you need those three together to be successful in a fight. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, James and then Ellen. I'm kind of paraphrasing Joshua's question. So if Jesus didn't die, like if the blood wasn't, if we didn't have the blood, would we still be killing lambs for their blood? James, your question is for who, Joshua or is for everyone? Oh, everybody, I was just paraphrasing Joshua's question. Uh, okay. James is asking a question, yes, uh, Jesse. I don't, I don't think so because, again, we have prayers. We can dance to God's glory. So I don't think we would still need to, like, sacrifice lamb. But in the Old yes, Testament, yes. in the Old Testament, we worked fine. 
they would go to the high priest and they would kill and it would burn. It would um they would burn and the the scent would go to heaven. So would that still work as an atonement for our sins now? If Jesus didn't die. <laughs> yes, Darren. I want to say yes, I'm saying no because eventually God's patience will run out. You can't. Every, every, let's say, every million years, then people are always, they are sinning, and then right after that, they'll just take a number, then kill it and take it to the priest. Then their heart was in for, they, they want to repent. They'll just go back over and sin. Imagine you drink okay. alcohol for one year, and then you go the, you go and take a lamb. Okay, take this lamb, please, and um, please ask that you, you pray to God to forgive me. And then you go back to the next year and say, I want God to forgive me again. I want God to forgive me again. God will be like, you know what, I'm ending your life right now. Okay, but I think we learned some of this. I don't want to really, uh, for us to go long-winded on this topic, on this question. Remember last week we learned about when, um, I think I said, or one of you said that um, in, the, in, the, in the olden days, we were in the Old Testament, we're killing the lambs, right? To, for our sins, but, right? But it wasn't enough, right? And that is why Jesus sent his only son to come do the final work, the final sacrifice for us so that what we will have eternal to wipe away all our sin. And so just to add to or just to contribute to what is going on on the floor and not for us to kind of talk on it for a very long time because of time, I will say that if that was in what we were practicing in the olden days was enough then Jesus, God would not have sent his only son to come to this world, what? To, to be the final person, uh, the final, to offer the final sacrifice to us, to take away all our sins, right? And to bring us eternal um, life. With that said, the floor is open. Uh, Antonina, stand for correction. I'm also learning. So the floor is open. But Antonina, yes. you said that, oh, sorry. Oh, you can go ahead. Then after that, um, Benedict, you can come in. And then uh, you, you then, said that um the lamb the lamb's blood wasn't enough, right? Mm -hmm. So what deemed that lamb's blood as insufficient? What deemed the blood lamb as what as insufficient? Because yeah. I, I remember last week, James, you you we were doing the discussion. We were talking about the lamb that um, you were using, if somebody sins, God will tell them to go and use um, the, 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 what do you call it, the lamb, and then kill it, and then what, you offer sacrifice to God to purify you of your sin, right? And then it got to a time that Jesus said, well, these were sacrifices that we're doing, but you go, the what, those sins that were sinning that we're asking for, God to, to forgive us of those sins in those days, we will still go back and sin, but it wasn't giving us um, eternal life, right? It wasn't something that at that time, that was what God was accepting. That is what God was taking to what? To cleanse us. Until God himself decided that this time, the final sacrifice will be my son that will come in, that will work, will make all things right for us. And that is why now we can sin and ask for forgiveness of sins, right? And God will forgive us. And we Christians of today, we are abusing it, right? At first, and I remember last week, James, well, someone was, one of you was saying that God has been so, through Jesus, God has been so merciful unto us to the extent that now, in those days when you sin, they can call fire, and then fire can come consume you. You get an instant punishment there and then. But thanks be to God, because of God who sent his only son to come die for us. Now, when you sin, you go to God, you ask for forgiveness of sins, and God forgives you if you repent from your son. I don't know whether I answered your question, James, but the floor is also open. If anybody have anything else, you can also add to it. Yes, Joshua. All this talking about the blood of Jesus reminds me of the Passover when um when um 
the Israelites that were enslaved in Egypt had to get a perfect lamb, just like Jesus, because Jesus is perfect. He has never sinned before. So they got a perfect lamb and put it on their doorpost, and the angel of death, death got the Egyptians and killed the oldest son. God bless you, Joshua. Yes, Benedict. James, you want to come in after Benedict so we can wrap up? No. So probably you've all, you've all answered my questions. Okay. So probably we still will be killing lambs because like we don't have the blood, even though it's insufficient, we still would have probably because that would be the only way. And one thing Darren said really provoked me because if if you kept sinning and like you kept asking for forgiveness, it's not how it works. Because the Bible states that as like you're testing God. Because like just sinning and just saying, oh God, I'm sorry. But then you keep repeating the same thing constantly. You have to find a way to avoid the sin or pray. Because if you keep doing that, someday God is going to have enough. God is going to say, okay, that it's been enough. And God's going to realize because he's God, he's, you're testing him. And he probably won't forgive you. God bless you. Great contribution. So precious ones. We have, we've been talking about the resurrection of Christ, the resurrection of Christ. And we, this afternoon, we went over some of the benefit that is in for us uh, through his resurrection. The price of sin has been paid in full because of the incredible sacrifice of Jesus. We no longer have to live in fear, in shame, and in guilt. His blood has washed all of what? Any unclean thing from our body. We've been washed away. Every unclean thing has been washed. We have been made new. Any curses, any sin out of care, any curses that has was washed on us has been washed away. Jesus has united us. The resurrection of Jesus brought us into a union with God, our fellow believers, and ultimately all creation. The death and the resurrection of Jesus was a singular event with the power to reconcile all things to God. Oh, and finally, to bring the whole, uh, 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 to, to kind of wrap the whole thing up, all things will be made new. The power of the resurrection is hard to fully well comprehend. But one thing that we know is that those who place their trust in Jesus, our Lord, are reborn the moment they believe. And the day is coming where they will all experience a new heaven and earth free from what pain of sin may the lord bless us all uh resurrection topic is a very broad one so we will continue next week god willing we didn't finish we only um, um touched on 50 percent of it so we'll be back next week and um god richly bless all of you happy birthday to all of you that are celebrating your birthdays in the month of um april god richly bless all of you and remember Keep on learning and what the case time, the Pentecostal popping that is happening on national level in August. I see a lot of you that can take part. We are all having fun. We are all learning. So take part. And at the end of it all, all glory will be given unto, unto God. Until then, is may the Lord keep you safe. May his blood, the power in his blood, protect us all till we meet again next week. Bye. We love you all. Bye. 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 Bye.